Hi all, and welcome to this Microsoft full demo video. Uh, my name is Jenny Marin. I am a mobile solutions specialist with APHIS PPQ end user tools. And we have been using some of the Microsoft products um, for non-spatial purposes um, as a geographer. Um, that doesn't always come up, but we found them really useful. So I've created this video to help demonstrate some of the workflows that we've been using pretty successfully. Um, to start with, I am in Microsoft Teams, and what I've done is join a meeting alone, so it's just me, and start recording. And what will happen is this video will then, once I've finished, automatically upload to Microsoft Stream, um, and I can access it there and do some other cool things. On the background, I've also created a Microsoft form, which I will insert in this video, and used Microsoft Power Automate. I told you this would be Microsoft full. <laughs> used Microsoft Power Automate to, when a response is submitted to that form, um, automate an email, which tells me if there was a negative answer within that form. So it will alert me. And so I want to show you the form, first of all. So I'm going to share my screen here in this in Microsoft Teams. And sometimes it takes a few seconds to switch over. Uh, but you should be looking at what I have saved in my bookmarks bar as the Office 365 portal, and it's just office.com, which asks me to sign in using my eAuth. So this is my office access. And as you can see along the left here, we've got all the Microsoft products. And this one with the F here, Forms, I'll choose. And forms is a very limited, non-spatial way of creating a survey or a quiz. Dependent on your needs, a quiz can have assigned points per question if they get it right or wrong, and can also allow you to, um, um, to choose an answer that would be considered correct and make notes if the person were to choose the wrong answer, then a, a little response can come up kind of giving them the hint as to why it's wrong. So to create a form, you would choose new form or new quiz, one of these buttons. And I've already created this demo form, which is really very simple, but shows some of the things that you can do here. Um, number one, you want to know that this form can be shared either to the general public so external users can use it. You can share it using a link. I have this set to only people in my organization can respond. And as you can see, there's also anyone with the link can respond. Only people in my organization can respond also takes on the back end the person's name and email account as it is um, in our um, Office 365 system. So that's kind of the advantage there. So I'm going to pick that and then I would just copy this link and give it to um, anyone I want within the organization to fill out this form. And this is my back end view here, but I can also hit preview and see what it looks like to the user. And um, as you can see, it's giving me the warning here. Hi, Jennifer. It sees who I am when I submit the form. Also, your name and email address is being sent out. So let's switch back over to the creator's view. I've created a title here by clicking on it and typing things in. I can add a photo here too. I like to put the USDA um, icon in here. Um, I've created sections. It's very three dot centric. So I can duplicate the section, remove it, move it, add branching. Branching is what Microsoft likes to use as the term for adding relevance. And I'll show you what that means in a later question. Um, I've added a question that asks for their name. I've made it required. 
I've given them a hint here. This is what they call a subtitle, and I added that here using these three dots within the question. Again, I can add restrictions to it. Those options are, um, it has to be a certain type of answer. I'm gonna take that off because I don't wanna add restrictions. I can make it so they can answer very long answers or short ones. Um, I've got a date field here. Um, can I identify the animal I saw? This is where I've added some really rudimentary branching. And if I go to add branching, you can see what that is. So if they were to answer yes, it goes to the next question. Which of the below did you identify? And if they say no, it, go, it skips four and goes to section two all the way down here. Would you like to be contacted? So that's an example of some simple branching or relevance that you can set up within the form. If, uh, if you need anything extra beyond pretty much what I've just shown you, that branching only works in one step. So what I've just shown you is really the extent of that ability. Like I said, it's a simple form, but it can be really useful. Um, and also within the question, if you were to, for instance, here where we've got which of the below animals and you need to pick one of them, this is what is identified. I'm going to go back because we're still in the branching menu. Um, this is what is identified as a single choice question. I could allow for multiple answers. If I allow for multiple answers, that branching option is not there. So it can only be used in the most simple form if one answer is given. As an option, it can be asked to branch on. Um, what I'm going to do too is pause right now. And because I think I've talked about some of this um, and allow for a moment for this form to pop in. So after I've made this video in its completion, I will later insert um, an interactivity tab so what I'm going to do is go back to this Office Home Hub and go to Microsoft Stream. If I can find it, here it is, Stream, where I have other videos. And just give you a view on what that would look like, adding a form into an existing video. Here under My Content, Videos. And I want to look at this iPad Basics Section 1 video. It's a very short one. We won't watch it. I'm going to hit pause. As soon as I open it, it's going to start trying to play, so I'll hit pause. And as you can see, I've got a transcript over here, um, which is really as easy as clicking the button for yes. Um, and that plays as closed captioning as an option for the viewer. I can edit the transcript. They often get my name spelling wrong. I said Jenny Marin, it's now Jenny Sauer, so I might wanna correct that there, the spelling. And this interactivity tab allows me to add a form and place it on the timeline. And in fact, I have a form placed, you can see it's the iPad Savvy Quiz, and it marks where that is right here by this little dot. So if I move my marker along and hit play, Actually, let me rewind it just a little bit. You'll see that it opens up way ahead as a little option. So the person watching can hit that button. It opens in the same box as this video. They can take this little quick quiz, submit it, and the option then is to continue to the video. So that's just to give you a little view of what that looks like when you insert a form or a quiz in this case into one of these Microsoft Stream videos. So let's say someone, uh, let's say this video is finished and I've inserted my wildlife survey form and someone's decided to take this survey and submitted it. What I'm going to do is open the, I've uh, copied the shared link. So I'm going to fill this form in and copy that form link in and quickly complete it as if we spotted wildlife just the other day. 
let's say it was yesterday. I can't identify the animal. Actually, what I do want to do is identify the animal because what I've set up is a trigger. So I'm going to say it's a mountain lion and very aggressive. And would I like to be contacted? Yes. Please call me, submit. So I've submitted that response. And now I'd like to go back and show you what I've set up here in Power Automate. If I can find that one. They keep switching what these look like. OK, there we go. So Microsoft Power Automate has it so that you can set up flows. You can create flows. And I have a flow set up here already, which I'll show you. Label demo for this demo. And I will hit edit so that you can see my side of things. And what I've what the flow begins with is when a new response is submitted. So that's a trigger action. Then from I have to input my form. When a response is submitted in this form, I want to apply to each one. First, you get a list of those responses. You get the response details. And then I added a condition. If the question that says, please, please rate the aggressiveness is equal to five, or that was the highest level of aggressiveness, then if yes, send an email. And I've had it send an email to me that says the person's name, so I can pull in all of these things, all of these answers from that form that was submitted, has reported an aggressive, and they identified an animal, spotted on this date, and that person would like to be contacted here for more information. So I've set it up so that if we filled out the form as you and I just did, it will send me this email with this information. And we just submitted that form, and so I'm going to show you that I also just received that email. So that's what that email looks like. This pulled from my responses, my answers. That was the name I typed in. We said that we saw that animal, a mountain lion, yesterday. And I would like to be contacted here for more information. I see I missed a space right after there. So I can change that right now by adding a space and saving that flow. But so that's just briefly an idea of how to use the Power Automate as well. So just to review, I'm going to switch back screens here. And so we started with a Microsoft form. We knew what we needed from the public. That information from my Microsoft form is saved to my personal OneDrive. So it is really shouldn't be collecting PII or anything sensitive. Um, and I asked a few questions of a citizen. I shared that out to them. Um, I created this video that you're watching right now and had that form pop in. And you and I together filled out that form, which triggered a response based on our answers to that form and specifically to an alert that we were worried about, which was an aggressive animal. So I hope that helps kind of probably give you some ideas. Um, and if you think of other ways to use it, there are tons, but that's one example of how we at End User Tools have been using all of these Microsoft Office products, or many of them, to um, create workflows and collect information that's non-spatial. Thank you.